All right. Welcome back, everybody. I'm really excited for this conversation today. I've got with me Greg Eisenberg, who is the founder of Late Checkout and a handful of other really exciting ventures. It seems like you're all over the place these days, especially in the Web3 community NFT world. So we've got a ton to unpack, but really appreciate your time today, Greg, and, and sitting down with me. This is this is fun because you're one of those people I look up to on the internet, and now we're having this conversation, and everyone who's listening is going to witness our kind of first interaction. Yeah, just 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 a meeting of the mind, and I can say it's very much a two way street. Um, you're absolutely one of my one of my favorite follows. Before we kind of get into the meat of this discussion, I think it'd be really helpful for you know the few out there who may not be familiar with you, just give a quick background on yourself, um, and maybe a little bit about your journey into Web three and how you got here. Totally. Um, so my journey to Web3 came through being a nerd, frankly. So I'm one of those people that gets really obsessed with, you know, for a thing. So for example, like I just bought a Volvo. Um, the first thing I did is join the Volvo subreddit. Um, I'm looking at the, you know, the nuances between different models. I'm, I'm contributing to that subreddit. Um, that's what really attracted me to the internet as an early teenager. Um, and what I started doing was building, uh, forums, websites, social networks around particular niches, um, and realize that, you know, through technology, you can bring people together and unlock potential. So, um, you know, I'm 33 now, I just turned 33. And, you know, since I've been 13, you know, I've started and sold, you know, three or four companies, um, invested in, in, you know, 50 plus companies, and it's all been with community at its core. Um, when, uh, web three crypto started becoming a thing, you know, I bought some Bitcoin, uh, you know, in 2012, um, I bought some Ethereum in 16. And the big like aha moment for me was CryptoKitties um, from, from the Dapper guys. Um, just seeing that collectible, seeing so many people rally behind it. Um, and it just felt like more um, like a, a, an emotional connection uh, between me and the product. So was really excited about that. But when I looked at uh, how many daily active users CryptoKitties had, and I saw that it had like a thousand, I was like, I'm not gonna spend my time devoted to this. Um, and so I kind of quickly decided, you know, this is interesting, but you know, I'd much rather build a social app and get millions of users onto it. Um, I'm sure you remember that era in 2017 when CryptoKitties came out. It really did feel like a monumental kind of moment. Yeah, and it was one of those things where the the community that rallied around it, to your point, albeit relatively small, at least for their for its time, uh, was almost more interesting than what a crypto kitty was in essence, right? Or what the actual, let's say, you know, digital representation of crypto kitty was. It was really just the frantic frenzy around what crypto kitties kind of brought to the to the crypto ecosystem. Yeah, I sometimes think to myself, was crypto kitties the MySpace moment for Web three? Um, it had so much going for it, like, and, and I don't say that disparagingly, like I actually love MySpace. I was like a MySpace influencer, actually. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say that actually publicly. I, I've never said that. I think, you know, there were so, it's, there were so many uh, mechanics that it helped pioneer, but the core mechanic around, you know, basically an inflationary um, crypto kitties network where, you know, now there's millions of them really, you know, I think heard it, you know, because price went down. Um, and the cohesiveness between the generations, you know, Gen Zero, Gen One, Gen Two, Gen Three, sort of got lost over time. So yeah, I often ask myself that question, like, what, you know, was CryptoKitties the, the, the MySpace moment? And are we witnessing more of a Facebook moment right now? Um, and that's how I felt back then. Back then, I was like, this is interesting, but I think it might be a MySpace moment. What got me to go all in into Web3 was um, a few people actually, uh, Brian Flynn uh, from Rabbit Hole, uh, which is a, a learning to earn sort of quest-based educational platform. I had gotten to know him uh, over a few years and, and he basically, you know, this is like March, 2020, he really like, really said like, this is the turning point. 
and also Jesse Walden from Varian Fund. He, you know, I invested in Varian Fund, the first fund, or late checkout invested the, in the first fund. And, and hearing the, the thesis around the ownership economy, he has this amazing post. Everyone should read if you haven't read it, just around the role of tokens and, 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 the, and really the, the connection between community and, and tokens. Yeah. No, absolutely. I recommend everybody go read that. And and you've mentioned a couple of times, we've, we've talked about late checkout, right? Can you just quickly uh, describe what late checkout is and, and what you guys are doing there? So right around, I was having these conversations with Brian and Jesse. Um, you know, it was, I had sold a company to WeWork. I was the head of product strategy of WeWork. COVID hit. I'm like, I'm out. Um, I started late checkout to uh, to be a thesis driven holding company. Um, now that you know me a little, the thesis won't shock you. It's community based products outperform non community based products. To go after this, you know, thesis, we set up three business units. So we set up a small venture fund to invest in seed and Series A community based products. We set up a uh, product studio to incubate our own uh, community based products. And we set up an agency to partner with, you know, some of the largest brands in the world, their executive teams to transform to community-based and Web3. That's what I do today for the company. Yeah, no, that's fascinating. And so getting digging in a bit more to that thesis, what is it about community that makes Billy that that is such an advantage when it comes to building products, right? You compare, I think you've been quoted saying non community based products, or I should say community based products have outperformed non community based products. What is it about community that is such a strong advantage when it comes to whether it's a startup or even, you know, a, a larger company thinking about, you know, new products that they're launching? You know, I'm a product person. So I'll define it in product terms. Community is another word for retention and engagement. Retention because you're going to come back to this product if you feel it's your home. We always go, we always go home at the end of the night. Uh, no matter how much fun you're having, you're going home and you're sleeping in your bed. And engagement because you know a great community-based product has rituals, and designing those rituals to use the product are a core part of what a community-based product is. And the thing I'll add to that is, you know, a lot of people are throwing around this word community led product, community based product. And I want to take a second to define what it actually is. So a community based product to us is either the community is the product or the community enhances the product. So to give an example of community is the product, if you think about like, you know, Clubhouse, Clubhouse is really popular. A lot of people started using it. There was a you know, community of people were using it. Um, when a lot of those people left, the value of that network decreased. Community enhances the product. This is typically uh, you know, Web3 uh, you know, product. So for example, like the product of Bored Apes isn't the community itself, but the community enhances it. The product itself is an ape, you know, is an NFT, is an image with some utility. The community is what enhances that particular uh, that particular audience. In that case, like you know, some people could say like, is it really you know, does Jimmy Fallon really add to the community? Maybe not, you know, or does Post Malone really add to it? I, you know, I don't know. But the the overall perception, at least, is that the community enhances it. So that's that's what it is. Hey there, revolutionaries. Thanks for tuning in. For more content like this, head over to realvision.com forward slash crypto and get unfiltered access to the most brilliant minds in finance and crypto. Join our community of lifelong learners for exclusive access, unparalleled education, and unbiased insights.